Yes, Kelsey and Alex, and just over my shoulder to my left is the Trinity Reform Christian Church. And this is the focal point of a cold case that goes back to the summer of 1975. Now take a look at this little girl. Her name is Gretchen Harrington. She was eight years old when she was abducted from Marple Township on August 15, 1975, and she was later killed. Now, her body was discovered two months later at the Ridley Creek State Park, and her case had remained unresolved for nearly 48 years until this man, 83-year-old David Zandra, apparently confessed last week to the Pennsylvania State Police that he is the one responsible for her death. Now, Delaware County District Attorney Jack Stolsteimer outlined the confession yesterday, saying Zanstra beat the little girl to death after abducting her. This man is evil. He killed this poor eight-year-old girl he knew and who trusted him, and then he acted as if he was their family friend. Now, Zanstra was taken into custody on July 17th in Cobb County, Georgia, where he has lived for years. And in a statement, Harrington's family said, in part, quote, it's difficult to express emotions as we take one step closer to justice. And, quote, the abduction and murder of Gretchen has forever altered our family, and we miss her every single day. They also express gratitude for law enforcement. Now, as for Zanstra, he's waiving extradition from Georgia back here to Pennsylvania, and it'll be a few weeks before he steps in front of a judge here in Delaware County. Yes, Kelsey and Amanda, we're still kind of figuring out exactly what happened here last night. And as I actually will show you, that building right there is the Bluebell Inn in Combs Creek. It opened in 1766, but unfortunately, it was on the wrong end of this crash last night. And we have obtained surveillance footage of this crash. Now, the footage comes from the Island Supermarket, which is on the corner of Island and Woodland across the street from the Bluebell Inn. And as you can see, the trolley jumps the tracks and crashes first headlong right into a white SUV, and then eventually through that and hitting the Bluebell Inn leaving the building mangled. So we're here again in Southwest Philadelphia where you see the historic Blue Bell Inn. Again, it opened in 1766, but last night it unfortunately was hit by that trolley that jumped the tracks that also hit an SUV. And as we saw from that surveillance footage, this whole thing could have actually been a whole lot worse. Yes, Kelsey and Amanda, Montgomery County authorities did confirm during a news conference yesterday that 44-year-old Khalil Evans of Philadelphia turned himself into police and he faces felony charges of unlawful imprisonment of a minor and faces up to five years in prison if convicted. Now, the attempted abduction happened around 7 p.m. on Wednesday evening when the 14-year-old girl was briefly separated from her friends. She told police that as she was headed down the escalator to the first floor, she was met at the bottom by Evans, who identified himself as Alex. And by the way, you may have noticed that Evans was taken into custody and he was wearing a mall security shirt. Well, Abington police say he does not work security for the mall, and they don't believe he works for any security company. Yes, Amanda and Kelsey, it was indeed an awful scene out here. As you can actually see behind me, family members have been pouring in over the last hour here in Cobbs Creek. And the police were called here about 2.45 a.m. And neighbors said that they heard gunshots, lots of them here on the 6100 block of Locust. Investigators say a 47-year-old man and a 43-year-old woman, a husband and wife, were found dead on the sidewalk next door to their home both of them shot multiple times. And this is a block that is unfortunately not unfamiliar with tragedy. It was just three years ago that the killing of Walter Wallace Jr. occurred on this same block here in 2020. But currently, Philadelphia police are investigating another tragedy as two people were found dead, again, believed to be, believed to be the victims. They're both a husband and wife. We'll have more on this story throughout the morning and keep you updated on, again, this tragic scene that has happened here in Cobbs Creek. It really is good news, and gas prices are indeed more than a dollar lower than they were just one year ago today. In fact, if you take a look behind me here at the Wawa here in South Philadelphia, the current gas prices there are $3.73 a gallon. And you see some people are out here getting gassed up. There are some people actually working today, but everybody else is off today, either heading down to the beach or, you know, heading to those barbecues to get a hold of some of that really good potato salad. And we are indeed at the thick of this 4th of July weekend. AAA says we're in the midst of record travel this year. Well, good morning, Amanda and Kelsey. And this new federal lawsuit was filed in Nevada on Wednesday with nine women saying that Cosby used his, quote, enormous power, fame, and prestige to sexually assault them. 
The suit says the women were drugged and assaulted in separate incidents that occurred between 1979 and 1992 in Las Vegas, Reno, and Lake Tahoe. One woman says that Cosby, who was acting as a mentor for her, lured her to Nevada from New York City, where he drugged her in a hotel room, then raped her. Now, the 85-year-old Cosby has been accused of sexual assault as well as sexual harassment by more than 60 women. Meanwhile, the 76ers are back in action tonight. They'll host the Miami Heat as the Sixers try to rebound from that heartbreaking loss on Saturday night to the Boston Celtics. Jason Tatum hit this three-pointer with 1.7 seconds left in the ballgame to give Boston a 110-107 win over the Sixers. Tip-off tonight with the Sixers and Heat in South Philly is at 7 o'clock. It's time for Big Shots, the sports segment that highlights big plays from young athletes from across the state of New Jersey. And today's Big Shot is eight-year-old wrestler Dean Velez of the Parsippany Scorpions. Now, this young man wrestled in his first state competition, and as you see here, he gets the pin for the win. Now, Dean eventually finished fourth, which is a great job for his first competition. Now, has your young athlete had their all-star moment that's worthy of being a Big Shot? Well, News 12 is looking for those videos of your future superstar making that big play. Simply go to the News 12 app to upload your video and you could see your young superstar featured on News 12's Big Shots. And Amanda and Kelsey, as you can see, actually over my shoulder here, that's the reason for all these detours, the work that's currently happening on that southbound side of I-95. And while there's never a good time for the collapse of a major U.S. highway, the 95 collapse happens not only at the start of the summer travel season, but it's also messing with businesses here in the city and throughout the Northeast. The waves of the Atlantic Ocean crashing up against the beach clash amazingly with all the ice that covers the logs here in the pier. But for Doug Madej, he goes out into that ocean every single day. What first started off as a way to kind of keep it as an endless summer has become a perpetual polar plunge. This is the 173rd consecutive day that Doug has gone out into that ocean, battling everything from rainstorms to nor'easters to today the sub-zero wind chills and even sub-zero temperatures but he's doing it all for a very good cause to raise money for ALS awareness through Joan Dancy and pals right here along the Jersey Shore. There it goes. Hey, Amanda and Kelsey, and an old city, Philadelphia, indeed has a number of connections, of course, to history. And that includes the bar that's over my shoulder behind me. That tavern opened in 1759, and it has a very interesting name, a man full of trouble. Now, the name actually comes from a biblical verse in the book of Job that says man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. And it's managed to do what few places have done here in the city, and that survive largely intact as the city has evolved over the last 250 years. And now a real estate developer named Dan Wheeler, who, who used to work for Governor Rendell's administration, is looking to restore it. And he bought this building from the University of Pennsylvania two years ago, and he explained how he managed to get a hold of a 260-year-old tavern. That's right. I'm, I'm a real estate investor. It's what I do primarily. And, and, and this just showed up on the MLS one day uh, as, a, as a condo conversion project. And I said, are you kidding? Is this something I could own? And, uh, and I, I say I bought it from the University of Pennsylvania. I made an offer the next day. But Wheeler is putting his money where his mouth is when it comes to this restoration project of this particular tavern. He paid $875,000 for this building and expects to spend close to one million to fully restore it as well he also hopes to have this thing back in business and once again causing trouble by next spring in old city i'm jay scott smith for phl 17.